Kawasaki D to the Z900RS. I really really like the new Kawasaki Z900RS you just reviewed, but I'm slightly disappointed to read it's less powerful than the cheaper Z900. Why wouldn't Kawasaki have just left that engine alone? Why spend all the money to make it less powerful, when by all accounts it was a great motor in Z900 form? I think I still want to buy one, but now I'm sad and confused. Am I missing something? Help me! Kawasaki Z900 RS First Ride Review The original Z1, with its longish 66mm stroke, made peak horsepower at 8500 rpm, and max torque at 7000 rpm. On the dyno for a comparison in October, our Z900 made peak horsepower at 9800 rpm and peak torque at 8000 rpm. The Z900 is no slouch in the low and mid range power department, but it mostly delivers power in the manner of a modern short stroke 16 valve four, meaning it likes to rev. The original Z1 and its 8 valve engine wasn't really like that. Super powerful for its day, its engine redlined at 9000 rpm but was even more impressive for its broadband, mid range intense power. Pardon the blurriness of this excellent old ad Kawasaki dug up for the Arza's intro, but you'll note the last sentence of paragraph 2 refers to the original Z1 as maybe the best touring bike ever made. Maybe it was the best superbike at the time, but nobody was yet thinking in superbike terms. According to Kawasaki Europe's website, which is happy to traffic in facts and figures, the Z900 makes 125 PS to the Z900R's S111, 123.29 to 109.48 of our horsepower, but that's at 9500 RPM to the R's 8500 RPM. More importantly, the R's makes about the identical amount of torque as the Z900, 98.6 Nm Z900, 98.5 Nmrs, or 72.72 pound feet to 72.65, but the R's does it fully 1200 rpm lower in the power band, at 6500 rpm instead of 7700. Basically you get the full torque dose at substantially lower speeds. For the Z900 RS, Kawasaki mounted a higher, more rearward handlebar and more forward foot pegs that place the rider in an even more upright position than the Z900. No way were they going to encourage a youth in a billowy ski jacket to climb on and try to access the Z900's 9800 RPM horsepower peak which is probably somewhere around 130 miles per hour in top gear. Most naked bikes, in my experience, stop ceasing to be so fun at triple digit speeds. Why not pack most of the performance down at lower speeds we use every day in the real world? My bad for sticking in I was fine with the full power Z900 engine as a sigh in last Friday's review of the new bike. I was in a hurry to finish that thing up and couldn't think of anything else not to like.